Thank you very much for being here. Um, the goal of this panel and poster session is to serve as a catalyst uh, for interactions between mathematicians, organizations, and funding agencies across the world. It's really exciting to have uh, this group of panelists who are going to share activities that are occurring all over the world supporting mathematics. Uh, each panelist will speak for 10 minutes. I will introduce them all at the beginning. And then once uh, the panel is complete, then we will go outside and the discussions will occur at the poster session just outside this room. So there aren't going to be questions during the panel itself. We will have time for questions during the poster session in a one-on-one -on -one setting. Um, so the, the structure of the panel is uh, above. I just want to begin by saying thank you to the uh, Commission for Developing Countries Panel and Poster Session Committee, uh, Mama Fupua Nini, um, Lena Koch, um, and Polly Sai, who uh, you know, worked hard to make this panel happen. So additional information about the panel is on the CDC website. And if you have any questions, you can contact the cdc.grants email at mathunion.org. Uh, uh, I'm the, the moderator, Angel Pineda. Uh, I'm from Honduras, um, and I'm a member of the CDC. Um, our CDC president, uh, Wandera Ogana, will uh, be presenting. Um, Marie Francoise Roy. Um, the president of the Committee for Women in Mathematics, the director of the Mathematics and Physical Sciences at the Simons Foundation, Yuri Schinkel, uh, the president of the Math uh, Brazilian Mathematical Society, Paulo Piccione, uh, the president of the Southeast Asia Mathematical Society, Jose Maria Balmaceda, the president of the African Mathematical Union, Nusa El Jacobi, and the secretary of uh, UMALCA, the uh, Mathematical Union for Latin America and the Caribbean, Alejandro Joffre. Uh, so the panelists represent just a subset of the organizations that are represented in this event. There are 12 organizations that are, have posters uh, and also the, the organizations represented by the panelists. I just want to make sure that you know that these organizations are present and if you have any questions for them that you you know, reach out to them in the poster session above. So the African Institute of Mathematical Sciences, AIMS, the African Mathematics Millennium Science Initiative, AMSI, the International Center for Pure and Applied Mathematics, SIMPA, the Eastern Africa University's Mathematics Program, the European Mathematical Society Committee for Developing Countries, the Heidelberg uh, Laureate Forum, the International Center for Theoretical Physics, the International Commission for Mathematics Instruction, the International Science Program, the London Mathematical Society, Research in Germany, and the Southern Africa Mathematical Sciences Association. We really are lucky to have such a wide array of organizations being present today. Um, so once again, thank you for coming. Um, with that, uh, our first speaker, Wandera Ogana. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Anhel, for your introduction. I'll uh, speak about activities of uh, the CDC. Uh, since most of the information is already on the website, I'll just give a few highlights. No, okay. uh, the CDC is an organization which was created to manage all initiatives of the IMU in support of mathematics in developing and economically disadvantaged countries. Uh, there had been for a long time definition of developing countries as countries whose GNI was less than or equal to 7,500 US dollars but in recent years, it was increased to 11,000 US dollars. These are members of the CDC committee from 2011 
Oh, Angel is here. Mama Fufanini should be around. Policy should be there. Budi Nurani and uh, Alf. They are, they are all in the in the audience. But I should mention that a new committee has been elected to start over from 2019, and the new chair will be Dipendra Prasad from India. Uh, the secretary for policy will remain uh, as Olga. The new secretary for grants will be Alf. And then we have uh, Andrea as a Latin American representative. Our mama remains as the African representative. And Jose Maria Balmaceda will be the Asian representative. The IMUEC will elect or nominate the other two members. I'd just like to stress briefly on the activities. One of them is conference support. Right? This gives uh, conference support for conferences in developing countries. Usually, the maximum amount is 3,500 euro. Then there are also project support. If you have specific projects, they can also obtain some support. Now, one of them is the volunteer lecturer program, where our individuals can go and give intensive courses in developing countries for a few weeks. And this program has greatly benefited our mathematicians in Southeastern Asia countries not to mention the other countries, the, the other regions also have benefited quite a bit. They all started uh, a program called the African Diaspora Mathematicians Program. The main aim of this program was to involve diaspora mathematicians in promoting mathematics in their original homes. The CDC decided to start this with Africa, and depending on its success, it could be renewed and extended to other regions. Currently, there are three projects being supported. There's a project in Ethiopia, uh, and a project in Cameroon, and a project in Zimbabwe. You can get the details from the CDC website. In addition, the CDC has individual research visits. Now, for a long time, this was actually supported by CDC, but then the Simon Foundation started to provide support to this program. So the individual research visit was briefly suspended, but we'll mention about the Simon's program. We do have the ABLE visiting program. Uh, so far, 13 fellowships have been granted. The IMU Simon's African Fellowship Program now, this one was, the Simons Foundation used to support the IMU Simons Travel Fellowship Program. But in 2016, they specifically donated funds and indicated that they wanted that program to support specifically African mathematicians to go out and interact with colleagues elsewhere. And it has proved to be a very popular program now, the, we also have a number of graduate support programs. One of them is called the IMU Breakout Graduate Fellowship Program, which has been commenced as a result of donations by individuals who obtained the breakthrough prizes in mathematics. Then we have the Graduate Research Assistantships in Developing Countries called GRADE. This is a program which is run mostly due to donations by individual mathematicians. And uh, the main people behind the idea were Ingrid Bushi, and uh, Herb Clements. So far, it has supported three projects, project groups. And there is a fourth one which is supposed to commence operating uh, next year. 
There are many other activities which the CDC undertakes and uh, details can be obtained in the website. Uh, one of them is, of course, the library support programs. Now, I was also asked to briefly mention about the International Commission on Mathematical Instruction, ICMI. This organization was actually founded before the International Mathematical Union, but it's now a commission of the International, uh, International Mathematical Union since 1952. It undertakes a number of activities which are quite relevant to scientists from developing countries. One of them is the organization of the ICME, right, the International Congress on Mathematics Education. This usually involves very many uh, participants from developing countries. They also organize capacity and network projects, CAMP, and you can see from the map the different uh, regions in which the camp activities have been organized. They also have the client project. Now the ICMI has its regional representatives, or okay, it supports uh, regional conferences, but the executive committee is there, Jill Adler is the president, and there are other members. Now, the members, representatives of this committee are actually individual mathematicians who belong to the 98 countries which actually belong or are registered as members of ICMI. Now, there was also a brief talk on Committee on Electronic Information and Communication, and they held a panel discussion a short time ago, and it would have been nice if it actually been combined with this one. But its major mandate is to actually advise the IMU on aspects of its operations related to information and communication, including technical, legal, and financial implications. Now, the reason why I'm mentioning this is because uh, C CEIC, once it becomes fully operational, could initiate activities which can make a great deal of difference in the way countries obtain mathematical literature. To date, we have relied largely on library support, but with new innovations, there should be more interest in actually obtaining this support electronically. Uh, there are the committee members. Now, we would like to indicate that the CDC and the IMU actually do obtain a lot of support from different organizations and individual mathematicians, both in terms of donating finances and also their, their time, we are actually grateful to the organizations and individuals for their continued support. Thank you. So good, good evening. So I'm going to, to present the activities of another committee from uh, IMU, uh, which is the Committee for Women in Mathematics. Uh, I'm the chair of this, uh, of this committee. So we, we have a website, which is in fact a part of the uh, IMU website, where you can find more details on all the activities I'm going to, to talk about. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, well, I don't want to read all of this, but just to, to tell you that uh, we are a recent uh, committee of IMU. We started only in March 2015, and we got uh, we have been created by the uh, executive committee of the IMU, and we have some terms of references of reference that I don't want to, to detail, but uh, basically uh, we are trying to 
to uh, have activities in, uh, online with these uh, terms of, of reference, and I'm going to, to give you the details on the activities. Well, first, uh, this is the committee, so that uh, picture which was taken in uh, Cortona during our first meeting. And um, so we, we are 10 members. On this picture, there are only nine of them, but uh, uh, we are normally uh, 10 members. There, is a, there was also Ari Laptev, who was not uh, on this picture. And so it's, uh, as you see, a gender-balanced committee with two men and eight women. Right? That's what is called gender balance, right? And, um, okay, so we, first thing we are doing, we have a very important website, which in fact started even before uh, the committee. Uh, it was started in, in Seoul. And uh, we have a lot of uh, items in, uh, in this website, and it's basically changing if nearly every week, so it's really a very active website. And for example, there are 36 countries which are listed as having some form of, of organization for women in mathematics. And we have also a network of 120 people that we call CWM ambassadors. So mainly women, but also some supporters of CWM in 76 countries. And their role is to disseminate the information from CWM and also, of course, to uh, give us the information of uh, the initiative they are having in their, in their country or in their scientific network. So that's a very active uh, group of people. And we have also some budget from IMU, as any committee or commission from IMU. And what we decided to do, and that's, I think, one reason why I'm here, is it's, uh, we decided to support the networks of female mathematicians on a regional basis and only in developing and emerging countries. So there were activities, of course, in Europe. There are activities also in the US, in Canada, and so on. But the places where we decided to spend our budget was in uh, developing or emerging countries. So, for example, uh, in the period uh, 2016 to 2018, we received over 150 applications, and we funded uh, 30 of them about. And then the maximum amount we were giving was uh, 3 kilo euros for each, but it was really helping them to, to start their activities. And as a whole, we had one. 1,500 participants in all these activities. So for example, just to take an example, in 2017, we supported activities in Brazil, in Canada. In Canada, it was uh, because there was a mathematical congress of the Americas, so it was uh, supporting the participation from uh, people from Latin America, from Morocco, Chile, India, Nepal, Tunisia, South Africa, Iran, Vietnam, Mexico, and Japan. So we have posters where we are one per continent where we are describing uh, all the networks uh, we've been organizing. And um, there are also other activities we've been able to, uh, to support. So one, for example, was the film Faces of Women in Mathematics that you can find on our website. Maybe some of you have seen it already. So it was really impressive because, uh, sorry, uh, no, 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 that's not what I want to do. Sorry, sorry. Because, uh, so in fact, it's a very simple film. You just see faces of uh, women saying, I'm from such a country, I'm saying their name, their country, and I am a mathematician in the language of their choice. So we had, in fact, 146 clips with 200 and 43 women from 36 different countries speaking in 31 different languages. And we did that with nearly no budget because everybody was very happy to send her clip. So we have also the Gender Gap in Science project, which is a very important project. And uh, one thing I want to insist on is the survey of scientists. So all of you, male and women, and men and women are uh, invited to, uh, to fill this, uh, this project, which is also multilingual. So you can uh, fill it in the language of your choice. And uh, you'll see more information on, on this. Uh, just uh, just uh, uh, here you have this gendergapinscience.org.org .org, uh, website where you can find uh, the survey. 
So it's not only for mathematicians. So if you have colleagues who are also from computer science, physics, chemistry, biology, and so on, they are also invited to, to fill the, the survey. Okay, so we had the World Meeting for Women in Mathematics, which took place uh, in Rio, which was a, a big success. <coughs> we had over 350 participants. One, more than one third of them were coming from the Open Arms program supported by ICM. Uh, it's including a memorial to Maria Mirzakani that you can still see outside uh, this, uh, this room, and you can also fill a book of condolences if you, if you wish. And we had, uh, during the meeting, the world premiere of the uh, first part of the film, uh, Journeys of Women in Mathematics. So it's a film which was created by our committee, which was filmed and edited by micro documentaries and made possible by a grant from the Simon Foundation. And uh, in this film, you see three women, Nila Nataraj from India, Abinatu Pesha from Cameroon, and Car Carolina Raujo from Brazil which are featured in their home countries. And the second part will be a group of six women from various Latin American countries interviewed during WM Square. So for the moment, the only part which is available is the first part, but you can see it online already. And, um, and uh, then uh, I, I think by the end of September, we are going to, to have the, the full uh, film, which will include also all the events here in, uh, in Rio. Okay, so that's uh, a poster for the, for the film. Okay, so that's what I wanted to say. Thank you. All right, good afternoon. I would like to give a brief overview of uh, activities, the structure of the mathematics and physical sciences division of the Simons Foundation. Uh, the foundation was established by Jim and Marilyn Simons in 1984, and initially the foundation gave uh, major gifts to uh, institutions such as the Institute of Advanced Study, Rockefeller University, Cold Spring Harbor National Lab, MIT, but uh, starting in about 2007, several divisions were uh, established to proceed uh, programmatically. So the very first one is the Autism Research Initiative, and then in 2009, the Mathematics and Physical Sciences Division. It was established by David Eisenbad, uh, and uh, I came on board in 2012, and David Eisenbad moved back to uh, Berkeley to continue as director of uh, MSRI. 2013, the Life Sciences Division, and then also uh, a small in-house research group, the Simon Center for Data Analysis. And here, Ingrid Dobeschis was instrumental in, uh, first of all, proposing this idea to the foundation and then uh, helping us uh, organize the uh, you know, thought structure, uh, introducing people, and there are many panels that, uh, uh, well, in the end, led to uh, this small research group at the foundation. 2013, the Outreach and Education Division was established. That includes Maths for America. Uh, Maths for America supports uh, currently about 10% of mathematics and science teachers in New York City. They receive uh, fellowships. They come to the foundation for seminars and exchanges. Every day there are you know, many parallel seminars at the foundation. And also uh, the Quanta magazine that you may have uh, heard of, read, received, which is informing us about developments in uh, science and mathematics. So uh, then uh, in 2015, uh, Center for Computational Astronomy uh, was established and the decision was taken to uh, greatly expand in-house research. The Center for Data Analysis was renamed and is now the Center for Computation and Biology. Uh, and in 2016, the Flatiron Institute, our in-house research institute, was uh, created. It's a building right across the street from the foundation. 
Uh, we are about to announce the fourth unit. Uh, the third was uh, Center for Computational Quantum Materials, uh, established last year. So in steady state, there will be uh, 300 scientists working there on uh, computational problems arising in different sciences. Um, well, quantitative biology, uh, astrophysics, of course, modeling, simulation, data processing, and so on. So these centers will have uh, uh, staff scientists, uh, full-time in-house, but of course also uh, space for visitors, uh, people coming to the foundation for longer uh, visits, sabbatical leaves, and uh, uh, these centers will run conferences and so on. Uh, so now about MPS, Mass Physical Sciences. So we give grants to individuals. Our flagship program is a Simon's Investigator program that is currently open to US, Canada, UK, and Ireland, and proceeds uh, via nominations. There's a very rigorous uh, selection process. In mathematics, it's three to four awards a year. In theoretical computer science, it's up to three such awards, and then others are in uh, physics, astrophysics, and uh, mathematical modeling of living systems. Uh, so we are very proud that some of our uh, RDs at major distinctions of the profession. So this year, Akshavin Katesh was uh, uh, selected as a Simons investigator, and we were happy to learn several months later, well, here at the Congress, that uh, he got the Fields Medal. Uh, there are other uh, awards, grants to individuals. For example, the Simons Fellows Program that extends sabbatical leaves from six months to a year and allows uh, people more time for research. And then uh, there is relatively recent program targeted grants and MPS. Well, uh, one of the big grants in this category is the Simons Observatory that is being built in uh, Chile. That's uh, uh, $40 million um, uh, dollars total, but there are also smaller grants. These are high-risk things that don't really fit into uh, the usual channels and uh, federal uh, funding agencies. So we are organizing Simons collaborations and I will talk about it a little bit later. Uh, we give grants to institutes. We organize conferences in mass physical sciences. Uh, we've budgeted for up to 30 conferences a year, short conferences, two to three day conferences, as well as Simon Symposia, week-long conferences uh, that we organize. And then we support uh, some infrastructure projects. For example, uh, half of the budget of the archive comes from the Simons Foundation. And uh, we make uh, computer uh, software package Magma available to all institutions in the United States. So Simon's collaborations in MPS, these are international efforts uh, typically. So uh, there is an annual call for uh, uh, letters of intent. We receive 30 to 40 such letters and uh, we ask for full proposals. Uh, then the finalists come to the foundation to present their projects. Uh, so these are uh, four plus three year uh, awards uh, with, let's say, 10 to 15 PIs typically, and the budget is between two and two and a half million per year. Uh, so we do things at the interface between different disciplines, let's say mass physics or mathematics computer science, or again, things that are not really fitting into other uh, funding. Uh, Agencies. So in mathematics, I've listed here algorithms and geometry led by Asaf Naor, who will be speaking tomorrow, homological mirror symmetry, uh, Rondonagi, Tony Pantev, uh, a special holonomy, holonomy, it's Robert Bryant, arithmetic geometry, number theory and computation, Brandon Hassett, and uh, just this year we've established a collaboration on nonlinear waves led by May Borada, who is speaking here at the Congress. So we support about 30 institutes worldwide. Uh, uh, you may have heard of the Simon Institute for the Theory of Computing in Berkeley. Uh, it's uh, been around for five years. It's very active. It became a home for the theoretical computer science community. Uh, so here we provide the total budget at six million per year. The other institutes receive uh, funds, flexible funds that are not supposed to replace core funding, but uh, that's supposed to help the directors of those institutes to run programs that are near to their heart and that are difficult to support otherwise. We support MSRI, IHS, uh, KATP, um, but uh, also institutes, uh, with, well, as of Vietnam Academy of Sciences, uh, Tata Institute in Bangalore, Banner Center in uh, Poland, and uh, 
within that category, we also support uh, the International Mathematics Union, CDC, and also the European Mathematical Society in their efforts uh, to support uh, mathematics in developing countries. So we have uh, the African Mathematics Project. Uh, uh, these are five-year grants. It's a small program, um, but, uh, well, uh, it's uh, part of our portfolio. And again, so we are uh, young as a funding organization. We are uh, you know, looking, of course, asking the community for ideas uh, as to what is you know, most important, what uh, you know, things that we could uh, pursue uh, uh, within our, you know, of course, budgetary constraints. So um, please uh, come to us uh, with uh, your ideas and thoughts, and thank you. Good evening, my name is Paolo Piccione. I'm the president of the Brazilian Mathematical Society. And I was very kindly invited by Angel. I thank him very much for giving me the opportunity to speak a little bit about uh, the Brazilian Mathematical Society, the uh, society, the activities. And so I prepared a small presentation to uh, show you. <clears throat> the uh, Brazilian Mathematical Society is a relatively young organization. It is younger than me. It was. Uh, it was uh, created in 1969. It is the adhering organization for Brazil at the IMU, the International Mathematician Union. And it is also a member of uh, UMALCA, which is the Union, Mathematical Union of uh, Latin America and the Caribbean, as well as a founding member of the Mathematical Council of Americas. So we have a pretty strong international uh, uh, position. And um, so the uh, main purpose of the society is to help develop mathematics throughout the country in all its forms. So from research, teaching, and uh, outreach activities. And this is a very brief um, um, description of the activities we have. So one of the important things we do is uh, we uh, publish books. Mm. So we have a very strong editorial activity. Um, we are mostly interested in establishing a uh, mathematical literature in Portuguese. We are the uh, largest Portuguese speaking country in the world and we feel the heritage of our Portuguese uh, um, ancestors uh, and um, so it is important for us to create a strong um, um, uh, bibliography in, in Portuguese. So these are some of the collections we publish. We have uh, Fronteiras da Matemática, Mathematical Frontiers. Uh, these are, this is our mo most advanced uh, collection. And then we have university uh, text. And um, you can tell by the name, um, you can probably guess more or less uh, what that is about. We have uh, Matematica Aplicada, Iniciação Scientifica, Olimpiadas da Matematica. We also publish journals. The most important journal is the Bulletin of the Brazilian Mathematical Society, which is published by Springer. And we have other journals too, like Matematica Contemporanea and Sales Matematica, as you can see a list here. We have uh, Eureka, also a a journal dedicated to um, uh, Olympia problems and uh, journals for professors of mathematics. Um, so we look towards the future, but we don't forget our past. And uh, the Brazilian Mathematical Society also publishes regularly selected works of uh, famous uh, Brazilian mathematicians. So, so far, we have published four, uh, honoring the memory of uh, Manfredo do Carmo, Jacob Palis, Jairo de Figueiredo, and Ricardo Maia. Um, we uh, understand that uh, teaching is a very essential um, uh, ingredient for um, development of mathematics and our most important program uh, dedicated to teaching is called ProfMath. We are very proud of this program. This is a master's degree 
in mathematics for, for mathematics teachers. And um, so uh, the Brazilian Mathematical Society organizes the courses that are given all over the country. There's a, a more than 70 institutions throughout the country who are associated. They provide professors, university professors. And um, this is very widely distributed in the country. So uh, there is a, around 100 centers. And um, so far, we graduated about 4,000 uh, master's degree. And these are mostly um, public high school teachers. Uh, so this is really a very important activity for us. And we are very proud of it. Um, also, one of the activities, uh, uh, among the activities we um, uh, promote are meetings of all types. We have um, national meetings and also international joint meetings. Um, the Brazilian Mathematics Society is responsible for the organization of the Biennale da, Mat da Matematica. This is a biannual um, uh, event that covers all areas of mathematics, mostly dedicated to, not to researchers, but to students. And we have regional colloquial mathematics. Um, we have an important um, geographical gap. And uh, it is important for us to organize activities uh, well distributed uh, geographically in the country. But we also uh, sponsor several joint meetings on the international level. So we have had already joint meeting with the Italian mathematics, uh, with the UMI and with the France, uh, French ma uh, Mathematical Society, uh, with the Spanish Mathematical Society. We're going to have one with the Portuguese Mathematical Society. This will be given in uh, 2022, which is 200, the 200th anniversary of uh, Brazil independence from Portugal. So that is a nice way of uh, actually um, joining two countries together once again. Um, also, uh, we, uh, one of our concerns is um, we like to, um, to organize uh, activities, basic activities for everybody, but we also uh, want to uh, create a, a tradition of uh, prizes for our mathematical excellences. They serve as model for all of us. So. We also sponsor uh, several prizes and awards, the most important of which is, we call it the SBM Prize. This is a prize which is given every two years to the uh, authors of the best um, mathematical article published in the year uh, before. And uh, the only restriction is that the, the article has to be authored by uh, a Brazilian mathematician, where we mean by Brazilian mathematician mathematician working in Brazil. That's what we mean by Brazilian mathematician. We also sponsor, together with, uh, with IMPA, a prize for journalism and uh, a prize uh, for uh, undergraduate research for applied mathematics and a prize for best uh, PhD thesis called uh, the Gutierrez Prize. Um, And also, I wanted to tell you a little bit about um, our outreach activities. Um, so together with the ICM, we have also organized a biennium of mathematics, 2017-2018. And this includes a, a very long series of activities uh, throughout the country for the whole society. So for children, uh, families, students, and teachers. Um, we also organized a, a math festival in 2017, and um, also we are organizers of the Math Olympiads, the OBM, uh, which uh, involves about uh, 500,000 students. But we also organized, or uh, we also organize regularly um, a. Uh, Mathematics Olympiad, especially for uh, public schools. We call this OBMAP. And this is an extremely, extremely successful program um, where we have about 
more than 18 million students participating every year. So this is an incredibly uh, large number. Um, this um, Olympiads are organized in 96% of the territory, so really it's, um, it's very well spread geographically. It is given even, you can see a picture in um, small Indian villages, um, in prisons. It is also distributed in Braille alphabet for visually impaired students. And you have probably seen, um, there was a ceremony of um, awards for the gold medals that was given uh, a few days ago. So there were more than 500 um, gold medalists. We are extremely proud of this program. Um, and uh, we dedicate a lot of energy to its organization. Um, I also, before uh, finishing, I want to say that the society has a small number of employees. We have eight employees, and they're very dedicated people. And uh, so I want to uh, first thank all of them for uh, providing uh, their uh, help to organize all these things. And I want to thank you for uh, your attention. Good evening. Uh, my name is Jose Maria Balmaceda. I'm the president of the Southeast Asian Mathematics Society, uh, and I'm from the Philippines. Okay, um, when, when one talks, I was asked to talk about Asia and our development efforts there. But when one talks about Asia, a lot of people tend to lump together all the countries and the peoples in this large region into one homogeneous entity. But Asia is very diverse. It is very different. And this diversity is reflected also in the unevenness in the mathematical development of the different communities and countries in Asia. I speak in particular for Southeast Asia, where you find some of the poorest countries and also some very rich ones. But diversity can also, this is a big challenge in any effort at any level. But this is a challenge that can also be turned into a strength because we can learn from our differences and best practices that work for some country or some location can be applied in other places similarly situated. So as you can see, in Singapore, we have high-tech classrooms where school children have laptops. But in the Philippines, you see cramp, and many other places, you see cramp classrooms they don't even have desks, and their backs are turned against the wall. Inside the region are countries like sing powerhouses like Singapore, Hong Kong, economic powerhouses, but also very poor countries like Laos, Cambodia, Myanmar. So the needs of our region span the full range from the most basic to the most advanced. And therefore, when one does any developmental activity, one should have a very clear understanding of context context as far as the history, the peoples, the geography, the language, the traditions of the different places. For instance, take a look at this slide. It's an old one showing the number of researchers per million. And you can see, of course, Singapore, Australia for reference, but you can see some other countries in our region very far. We even have a problem collecting official data. Philippine data is 2007. This is the 2014 UNESCO, of, based on the recent 2015 UNESCO report. So just imagine the disparity in our region. And even in countries that are developing maybe faster than other countries, then I would include Indonesia, Philippines, there's still widespread poverty, overpopulation, and a lack of competent teachers and materials. So one must approach this problem from different sectors. One cannot do everything, but then we can engage each other. Academia, higher education can work with uh, basic education, school education, the government and industry. One only has to pick where one's expertise can contribute the most. We can't do everything, 
although sometimes we try to do so. And even in the developed countries like Japan, Hong Kong, Singapore, they contend with their own mathematical problems. A lot of uh, anxiety, low satisfaction of students. So one can really help develop a developing world is not anymore just the very poorest. It is the whole world. Everything develops. I think one good strategy is to form regional societies, like the Southeast Asian Mathematical Society. You can see almost all of the countries in Southeast Asia are represented in our society. We hope that Laos and, Cam and Brunei will soon be members. And even in the formation of some of those that came before, the, math, the seams was very instrumental in trying to put together mathematicians. In recent years, Myanmar and Cambodian mathematical societies were formed, partly with the help of seams. So our, our countries, although are very, very different, they also have very th many things in common. A shared culture in some sense, a colonial history, which everyone understands, and there are, very, there are some centers of excellence now within the region. So these good universities can help each other. I remember when the French were helping some Cambodian students, we told them, send your stu the Laotian Cambodian students to the Philippines. We can teach them. So they got their master's degree from the Philippines, and some of them are now doing PhDs. So we can do it, even if we are a poor country, because there are good centers. And one can exploit that because we are near each other. We can talk easily, we can meet, we can share common practices. And it's also a lot cheaper. We don't have to send people to Europe. We don't have to ask them to learn a very foreign language. We can send them within our region. So that's just one strategy. And regional societies can do that. Of course, our activities are very similar to any society, so I don't really want to dwell on this. I must say, though, that the SEAMS has a big conference, the Asian Math Conference, which is held every year, and the next one will be in Vietnam. We also work a lot with other societies, other countries. I want to say that the, we are partnering a little bit with the Mathematical Society of Japan. They want to award uh, an astounding young Southeast Asian researcher. So maybe some people here are qualified and interested. We also published the Southeast Asian Bulletin of Mathematics through Sp Springer and a University in China, the Yunnan University. Most of our work in our individual countries are done by their respective math societies, Malaysia, Philippines, Vietnam. And we do very similar things. We run the Olympiads, we train, we do teacher training at all levels. We hold research conferences. So we are very active. One of the things we are proud of are the SIM schools. And we want to say that this was patterned after the EMALCA, the Escola de Matematica program in the Latin America and Caribbean Union. We want to support people who have uh, little access to advanced workshops and trainings. Again, we can save costs because we can teach our own, maybe with the help of a few. We want to service or help those uh, marginalized people, indigenous people, women. But as you can see from the picture, there is still some unevenness. The top picture, they're mostly men. They're in number theory. <laughs> the lower picture, linear algebra, matrix analysis workshop. A lot of women there. So we want to give opportunities to women. I was asked to speak about India and Central Asia. Unfortunately, I really don't know much. And I don't think I'm credible to talk about India and Central Asia. But you can see, just like our region, there is also that unevenness, disparity between different places. But you can see some progress, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan. India, of course, has a long history, long tradition. We don't have to say much about that. But we are concerned because these are our neighbors to the west and China and to the north. So I close with a few final thoughts and wishes. I think we can partner if we respect our differences, and understand, try to understand the needs and priorities of each country or each location. We can't just transport Western ideas and use them in maybe other places. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. 
Sometimes we talk about technology, but our problems are very basic. We don't have electricity in many places. I mean, not even, not laptops, but electricity. So, we can also learn about our local culture and the mathematics behind our culture. The profile of women researchers is not so bad, but we know the reality. At the end, maybe more and more men occupy top positions. So there are many things one can do. We can encourage sandwich programs. That's where our PhD students do their research, maybe for a limited period of time. This allows them to come back. Maybe brain drain is lessened, culture shock is lessened. We should, you should, we should look for op opportunities for postdocs, research visits, because we don't have a lot of that. Not in all, but as I said earlier, in some centers we can do that. We can send people to Singapore, to Vietnam. Vietnam has already produced a Fields Medalist. So, and there are other things. Even this issue of predatory journals, we can campaign against that because the victims are mostly from the developing countries. So one can really talk about these issues that pertain to the very poor countries. And that's all. That's what we want from all of you. Our partnership, your support, and our positive attitude toward this issue. Thank you very much. So uh, I am uh, Nuzail Yakubi, University uh, Mohammed V. Uh, in Rabat, uh, Morocco. I am the president of African Mathematical Union. Uh, so, uh, more than uh, 40 years after the creation of the African Mathematical Union, uh, with a mission, uh, status, and objectives designed uh, according to the uh, various impediments, challenges, uh, opportunities and so on of the moment. Our responsibility for this new mandate, 2017-2021, uh, is to define a new vision uh, consisting on redesigned girls uh, with an improved... Ah, <laughs> okay. With, um, I think it will be better for me to read from here. <laughs> uh, okay. Microphone uh, is uh, is to define uh, this one. Okay, is it okay now? Okay. Uh, so with in improved and uh, better adapted strategy for uh, relevant, significant, and uh, fruitful development uh, of mathematics uh, uh, in Africa to meet. Uh, the requirements and expectations of this new millennium. These words were on the top of my address in the new AMU website, www.africamathunion.org. Uh, the African Mathematical Union, AMU, was founded during the first Pan-African Congress of Mathematicians in Rabat, Morocco, in July 1976, uh, after uh, several meetings uh, of mathematicians inside and outside of Africa, with mission to coordinate and promote the quality of teaching, research and outreach activities in all areas of mathematical sciences through Go Africa. Advancing mathematical research and education includes efforts and contribution toward the economic, social, and cultural development of the continent. For the achievement of such mission, the following actions were being undertaken. In 1978, the AMU Executive Committee created the AMU Journal Africa Mathematica, initially with the aim to make mathematical research originating within Africa more widely known. Since 2011, Africa Mathematica has been published by Springer. The submission rate has been growing since that date, and it has truly increased in the last couple of years. 
since 2013, the improved status of the journal was even densened by the fact that it has been listed by Scorpius. In December 2018, for the first time, PACOM, Pan-African Mathematics Congress of Mathematicians, uh, 2017, proceedings will be published in a special issue of Africa Mathematica. In 1986, four AMU commissions, four AMU commissions were established. For mathematics education in Africa, second one for Pan-African Mathematics Olympiads, for history of mathematics in Africa, for African women in mathematics. In 2009, the AMU Commission for Research and Innovation in Mathematical Sciences was added. The IMU main activities are, the more important one is Pan-African Congress of Mathematicians, PACOM. Till now, nine editions have been organized in various African countries in collaboration with the African government of the host country and the support of many international organizations like UNESCO, SIMPA, EMU, LMS, AMS, SM, SMF, SMI, ICSCO, NSF, and so on. The last PACOM was hosted by the Mohammed V University in Rabat in July 2017 under the item Mathematics at the Earth of Technological Innovation and Economical Development of Africa. The item was motivated by the fact that Africa is currently striving to achieve the much needed socioeconomic growth via innovation, science and technology. And of course, mathematics at, are at the heart of science, technology and innovations. For the first time, three satellite conferences were scheduled on relevant topics. EDUMAT on professional development of, on mathematics, mathematics teachers in Africa, Matlogy on mathematics as evolving technology, WPACOM on women in mathematics for the social development in Africa, also a symposium on mathematical modeling of complexity in life sciences, a round table as well as a workshop on think prospective in collaboration with UNESCO. Also, two AMU PACOM 2017 medals have been awarded, respectively to Prof. Khalil Zinbi from Qadiyya uh, University, Morocco, Prof. Dauda Sangari, University Abu Bouadjami, Côte d'Ivoire. Thanks to uh, Mohammed V University in Rabat, the Moroccan government partners and, spon and sponsors PACOM 2017 was a great success. The AMU General Assembly took place in 2, in two July and elected a new executive committee. Also, new members have been appointed for the AMU commissions in order to install a new breed for renewal and achievement. All the commissions have been requested to set up an agenda and a planning of their activities, a draft or the global agenda and planning of this Monday could be found in the new website. The new vision, uh, new vision of, the, of our mandate. Our conviction remain that African Mathematical Union should be the main structure to contribute efficiently in the development of mathematics in Africa at all levels in connection with research, learning, mathematics education, technology innovation and so on, in collaboration with all national, regional mathematical association societies, go and foundation sharing the same goals as well as with international mathematical organizations. Our determination is to let the man our mandate be federated by motivating 
the National and Regional Mathematical Association or societies in Africa to join AMU. Innovative by developing fruitful collaboration with the business and industry world, adhering in MATAIN, ICM, and so on, and creating Africa MATAIN. Rich by organizing relevant events through Africa in collaboration with international organizations. Uh, also, aware of the importance of science, technology, and innovation for the socio-economic development of, of African nations and supporting the initiative adopted by, by the African Union in 2014, which set up a 10 years science, technology, and innovation strategy for Africa, STISA 2024, the new strategy of AMU consists of the development of mathematics that can impact crucial sectors of the economy, such as, such as agriculture, energy, environment, health, infrastructure, development, mining, security, and water. So, a first initiative was to conduct awareness and motivating campaign around the essential role of mathematics in STI, science technology innovation, particularly for girls and women in mathematics who remain underrepresented in many sectors in industry and business worlds. So uh, this is the first workshop that we will uh, organize uh, in, uh, uh, in Botswana uh, in the framework of the uh, SAMSA conference. Uh, IMU action undertaken uh, uh, since uh, July. Uh, IMU website is uh, now available. Database of African uh, Mathematical Association Societies Foundation. Uh, um, review Committee of IMU Status and Internal Regulations. Uh, first draft of the Global Agenda. Thank you for uh, your attention. Okay, um, good evening. Thank you for the invitation to present the activities of the Latin American and the Caribbean uh, Mathematical Union. Uh, well, uh, UMALCA was uh, created, founded in 1995, uh, so we have a um, long time ago. And then uh, the activities of UMALCA are articulated in three uh, programs. One was the uh, most active is uh, Emalcas, was cited by my colleague previously, and then uh, support for travel uh, grants for uh, mobility between countries in in Latin America and the Caribbean, and a conference uh, called CLAM, Latin American Conference Mathematics, and uh, prizes uh, uh, important prizes given by Emalca. So I will describe quickly some of these activities. First, a Malka school is, uh, the idea is to put in contact colleague, uh, college students in a location where a few access to mainstream mathematic mathematics and mathematicians, uh, and, uh, and have been very active. And it was started in 1988, and it's running every year, and, and uh, we, Malka has organized this school in different countries. Always uh, the teacher of this school are prestigious mathematicians. And this school are uh, sponsored uh, by SIMPA, uh, regular sponsor, and then uh, IMU, CE, MCA, and then in, it's in process, they also support from Chester. Um, this is an example of the, I, I took only the, the last four years, we have schools, and uh, you see the, the variety of uh, countries and, and in, loca in different lo uh, locations. And, uh, and then we have uh, every time uh, an, an active participation of uh, students. That uh, students move to this uh, specific location to be part of the uh, market school. Um, then um, another second. Uh, Activity is the travel grants. The travel grants allows then researchers uh, 
especially young researchers, uh, to move from one country to another country for a conference or for a research uh, state for some weeks. And, uh, and then uh, uh, this, uh, as you look, the last year have been mainly allocated to uh, young researchers and postdocs. Um, a third activity is a club conference. Uh, is a club conference is organized every four years. Uh, it's a region-wide meeting. Um, it is, the idea is mod modeled on ICM. And did you look at the list of uh, the past meetings? It starts in, in the first in 2000 in Rio de Janeiro, and then uh, here, and then uh, in Mexico, and Santiago, and Argentina, and Colombia. So and, uh, the next meeting will be in, in, in 2020 in Uruguay. So these are the, the activities of the Clown Conference. And then uh, another uh, um, program is connected with uh, Umarca Prize. Here I just uh, uh, collect the, uh, the Umarca Prize. Uh, then uh, you see the list of uh, important mathematicians that got this uh, award about this, uh, uh, this prize. Okay, let me uh, quickly give an, uh, an overview of the Umalka, of the, of the mathematics Umalka. Uh, so first, I'd like to say that uh, we have, uh, we observe in the Umalka community uh, an, an increasing quality of mathematics produced by Umalka countries. Uh, and uh, not only that, the number of also mathematicians have been increasing the last years. And then, uh, with this, if you look at different countries, uh, there is today uh, a, a network of uh, centers of excellence uh, in mathematics, uh, including those that have been created by, uh, as an international unit by CNRS, some of them are supported by CNRS. Then, uh, then that, that created a very different dynamic, very international, active, uh, with support with, uh, with different, different countries. So that made that today that we can say that uh, there is a strong uh, international network for collaborate between different countries, not only in Latin America, but also Latin America connected with the world in, uh, uh, in collaboration in different domains. Uh, and also another important fact is that you look at different countries, more and more you see mathematicians involved in uh, some strategic application uh, uh, for, and uh, which are sometimes connected by with only one country, or sometimes are uh, are a challenge coming from two or three countries. Uh, I, give, I gave that as an example: energy, mining, forestry, environment. Are or some of, some of these projects are involved not only in one country, but are three or four countries working together using mathematics for trying to solve. To, uh, some of these uh, issues, which are very important, of course. Um, example of this uh, collaboration that, that uh, researchers in Umalga have been using, for example, this Madame suit, Stikam suit, are also supported by CNRS, uh, and then our uh, activities were, uh, it's important the collaboration, promote the collaboration between countries in, 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 in members of Umalga. Uh, well, another point is uh, we, we, he, we, you look at the last 10 years, uh, many important conferences in mathematics have been organized in, in one of the Umalka countries. Huh? And then here, of course, uh, ICM is the best example okay, of, uh, of this. Um, then uh, we also, I would like to mention also that you look at the PhD programs all along the countries uh, in Latin America, the most active have been becoming stronger, uh, not only PhD program, but also postdoc program, uh, more and more active. So Umarca is also connected to uh, the countries in, in, uh, in Umarca have been uh, participating in the MCA initiative. And uh, that makes, uh, I think, uh, uh, I'd like to say that the Umarca community uh, very healthy and active uh, if you look at the last 10 years. Thank you very much. Um, 
It is uh, truly wonderful to have so many of you here today uh, in this experience. Um, let's just thank the entire panel of speakers one more time for their presentations. Uh, I learned a lot from hearing the different perspectives, uh, but this is just half of the conversation. Uh, the next half of the conversation is occurring just outside of this room with the posters. There are 12 organizations and the organizations represented in this panel that are going to be sharing ideas. So at this point, um, thank you all for coming to the panel, but let's continue this conversation in the poster session right outside. Thank you.